honor to be here, and I, I, I have to say, my partner from Beijing, Li Yu, is here with me, and Dr. Zhao Kongzhen, the engineer, and representing TransSolar. What's really interesting about tonight is the, the, problem, the problematic of the measure, right? And tall is not necessarily the measure. And I really like to follow this, uh, this presentation of Mr. Kuakaba because he has 288 wells, but we have 688 wells. <laughs> it's almost as if something fundamental has changed and the, the, the HVAC, the MEP, whatever you want to call it, is just as if not more important than the structural. The structural is very important. So this idea of the, the architect, the structure, and the MEP. So the MEP takes, so anyway, I want to show quickly the building. Um, it's a very important site in Beijing, right on the first ring road. That was the old wall that, that Mao tore down. And that's the site that when you go from the airport, that's one of the first projects you see. Next. And the, the developer had a factory site. We didn't take any hutongs down. I don't believe in that. It was a kind of uh, a, a brownfield site. And he had a zoning diagram of eight towers, 800 apartments, and asked us to come and do a kind of skin job on the on the towers, you know, a famous architect does a skin job, something interesting, iconic. And I said, I'm not interested in that. If you would like us to do a kind of very thorough visionary project. So this is kind of process models. And finally, we added many things to the program, like a Cinematheque right in the center, like a hotel that wasn't in the program, shops all around the base. Next. And basically, the premise is that Beijing is a city that was once horizontal. And in 19, what, 1920, around 1949, Mao lifted the restriction that you couldn't build higher than the, the Forbidden City. That means you could start building towers. But Beijing is becoming a city of point towers, and many of them are gated communities. And this is wrong, we feel. And we want to make some kind of horizontal city that's much more socially, socially connected and socially defining space. That's a key core drive. Next. So this was the first sketch, and that is the idea of on the street, shops, and a secondary level, maybe offices, and a third level. So this is very different than the, the problem of, let's say, Minneapolis and sky bridges. There is so much density in Beijing that you can have plenty of shops on the street, and our idea of porosity of the street is very important. But you could also have in the air. It's not to take away the activity on the street. In fact, we feel very strongly urbanistically the street activity is key. Next. So there you see the model, you see the bridges that are connecting the eight towers. By the way, I never did it. I never built anything this tall. 22 stories to me is very tall. I'm a professor of architecture at Columbia University. I do some museums and some houses. So this was a big uh, uh, you know, piece of work. So what we really felt that we have to push it to the limit. So we proposed all these different functions at the top. Next. Um, you can see uh, there's a swimming pool, uh, there's, a, there's a health club, there's restaurants, cafes, the whole a range of different activities that go and you come up the, the hotel uh, and you can go around the loop, a semi-public loop, next. And the idea of the structure, I always feel that structure is 25% of the architectural budget and it ought to have some meaning in the expression of the building. So this is an exoskeletal frame, you can see the the, the, the earthquake loads here are nine, they're very high, so we have the diagonal bracing exposed, but otherwise it's about the windows, next, and framing the space. There's the cinema tech in the center, next. So this program then is all added, it felt like a Columbia University uh, student project. I said, well, you must have a cinema tech, you must have a hotel, you must also have all these bridges, you have to have, you know, I, we added all these things to the program, and the client, uh, Jean Lay, said, Okay, we want to build it all. That's Beijing, just before the Olympics. The climate's a little different right now, but next. You, you can see the circulation. I won't go into it in detail, but connecting up and down, next. And porosity, for me, a concept of a city is about porosity. That is, being able to move through. That buildings shouldn't be so big. And I say no bigger than a New York City block, 200 feet, and then you can move through. So all this is about porosity, moving in and moving out, so everyone can come in, go to the shops, next. The central spaces, next. And, the, and okay, the, there's the, there's the uh, Cinematheque, 400 seats, three cinemas, next. 
This has 680 geothermal wells, 100 meters deep. At the time, the largest geothermal array in, in China. And it's up and running, and it's cooling and heating the entire project. Not only that, it has a gigantic ultraviolet filter tank, and every apartment has two plumbing systems. That means all the gray water is recycled. We have enough to make up the gigantic pond in the middle. We can green uh, water all the landscape. And when we did the calculations, we found, amazingly, we have enough to also flush the toilet. So Beijing is a place of water shortage, and I think this is the future. I think every city is going to have to think about water, and this is a project that's a kind of model of that. Next. There they are putting in the, the radiance in the slabs. There's radiance in the slabs, and Matthias Schuler pushed us on this and the client that the heating should be in the slab and the cooling should be in the ceiling. That's very expensive, but they did it. Next. And there's, the, this is the recycled, uh, and you don't smell anything. You know, the, the ultraviolet system totally zaps it. The ducks love it. You know, they would not be there if, if the water was dirty. So people are enjoying it. The water is working very well. This will freeze in the wintertime and become an ice skating ring. Next. And we also did the landscape. Um, there's not enough time for me to explain it, but it's the kind of five phases of life from childhood to, to adolescence to middle age to old age to infinity. This is a kind of memorial place in the infinity space. Next. The, the most difficult thing we thought would be the bridges, but in fact it turned out, because of our great engineer, to be the easiest thing. Just build them on the ground and jack them into place. So, how many tons? 400 tons? Four, 300 tons on the ground, frame, jack in eight hours. Next, uh, hydraulic cr uh, crane, uh, jacks that are only, only about as big as this podium, pull the bridges up in about an eight, seven, the eight hours was the longest one. Next, secured in place, no problem. And on Dean Nordenson's rockers for, for the earthquakes, absolutely no problem. So what we thought would be the difficult, most difficult thing was not. Next, there's, there's the kind of first time we could walk through all the eight towers and do the whole circuit through. Wonderful feeling of, of space, of public space at the top level. Next. And that's just a, a recent view. Next. And, and the water garden, you can see. Next. And the Cinematech, because it's a cinematic experience, and I, I really believe that you must experience architecture in the round and in the whole. And this is really about forming a public space. It's not about a singular building. And so the cinema is a kind of analogy of what, what the project is. So putting a Cinematech in the center next is really a key thing. And, and the detail for me, the haptic realm, the sort of phenomenology. That's why I love to be in this Mies building today, and I'm very proud that you have this ceremony in a building where one architect who had so many ideas but all, always cared about the detail and the material, Mies. Next. There's the bottom of the Cinematheque, and I think next. This is, when you come out of the parking garage, you want to feel like you're in some place. So the elevator, you arrive in these little kind of what I call tea houses, but then you have a view of where you're at. So it's something experiential. You're at the water garden. You came up out of a 2,000 car? How many car? 2,000 car parking garage. But you arrive somewhere. Next. And, and I'm just now just standing after I arrive from the park. You see the Cinematech. You understand the whole place. You're not just arriving in a dark stairway. So it's all the experience of the person. And I, I also connect with John Portman's speech about the experience of people and how they live in a place very, very important to me as well. Next. And just some shots of just the places. It's very hard to show this in individual images. Next. And that's, you know, that's a wide angle distortion kind of image. But, you know, it's, it's, it's really about a space. And it's about forming a public space that has several layers and several experiential dimensions. Next. So in the bridges, we have different activities. Next. And already they're programming small uh, activities and different events and theatrical events in these bridges along with the spas. So these things are going to be kind of spontaneous places for things to happen which we don't know. Next. So you can see those spaces, they are semi-public and they connect everything in the project. Next. The hotel, there's the Cinematech. All, all the buildings have green, green roofs. They're just now installing the green roofs on the other buildings. Next. 
And at night, the thing takes a kind of second life. We use the undersides of the bridges for lighting as well. Hervé Descartes did the lighting from L'Observatoire from Paris. Next. And just the idea of using that urban mirror, the water itself, as also a reflecting section. Next. And how it fits into the urban frame is very important to me. And I'm sorry you can't see it, but these are two existing urban buildings that are part of the grid and how you feel when you come upon this other space. Next. And everything was made in China except the roll-down shades, which were made in Germany, because Matthias Schuller had insisted we have to have roll-down shades that come down when the sun is too hot. And they had to, they had to bend over and do that. So next. I'm very happy those are so beautiful but I'm sure the Chinese will find a way to copy those right now, so thank you. <laughs>